Hey kids. Welcome to Unit 3, The Narrative. Starting today, we are going to be learning everything about analyzing a narrative text. At the conclusion of this video, you will write a blog, summarizing the major points from this video, so pay attention as you watch. It would also be a good idea to take notes so that you can reference them while you are writing your blog. We need to review a couple of things first, like the parts of a narrative. This is going to be important in this unit. What are the four parts of a narrative? All narratives begin with an exposition, followed by a rising action, leading up to a climax, and ending with a resolution. All narratives have a setting. The setting tells me when and where a story takes place. Now, however, you are going to have to be ready to explain how the setting affects the story. You have to not only recognize the setting, but also analyze it. Would the story be different if the setting was different? How? These are questions you will be asking yourself. We are going to revisit characterization and character traits. You are going to have to recognize what is stated and infer what is implied in order to correctly characterize and accurately assess traits. What did he say? What did he think? What did he do? What do all of these things tell me about this character? What predictions can I make based on my knowledge of this character? All of this and more. We will look at small sections of texts and analyze the main idea. We will look at the theme, mood, and tone of narrative texts. All of which we did with poetry, but this time, we will be looking at narratives. So you will have to not only figure out what the writer is saying, but also how he's saying it. What it tells you about him or her. And what way readers are probably supposed to feel because of it. It's a lot, I know, but I strongly believe my young, proficient, articulate, literary scholars can handle all of this. Don't you? There will be a lot of writing about text connections in our blog throughout this unit. Don't be surprised if you find yourself regularly answering the same four or five questions in your blog. One of which being, make a connection to the text and explain it in a well-written paragraph. We will look at characters in depth. We will look at characters and analyze whether they are static or dynamic characters. All this means is, does the character change as a person between the beginning and the end of the story? If he or she does, then he or she is a dynamic character. If he or she does not change at all, then he or she is a static character. The change can be physical. By change, we mean the way the character thinks, feels, or acts. Sometimes, you'll hear kids call dynamic characters round, and static characters flat. Once you get out of elementary school, you will never hear those terms again. So we must learn the right ones. We will also look at characters and decide whether they have internal or external conflicts. Conflicts are problems that characters in a story face. These problems are external if they are between the character and someone or something else. The conflict is internal if it is in the mind or heart of the character. Internal conflict involves the character's thoughts or feelings. For example, Martin has a problem with Gina. That would be an external conflict. The hurricane is causing Martin problems. That would also be an external conflict. Martin is afraid of the storm. That is an internal conflict because fear is his problem, and fear is in his heart. Martin is confused about what to do with his life. That's an internal conflict because confusion is inside of his mind. We will also be looking at point of view. Point of view tells what kind of narrator a story has. If the narrator is a character in a story, the point of view is called first person. This is easy to remember because a first person narrator uses a lot of first person pronouns like I, me, we, us, and our. These words all show that the person talking is a part of the story. If the narrator is not a character in a story, the point of view is third person. Third person narrators use a lot of third person pronouns. Pronouns like he, she, they, and them. Sometimes, you will even hear about second person narrators. A second person narrator is talking directly to the reader. 
Usually, these are things like directions and manuals. You will probably never see a second person narrator in a narrative text, but I wanted to tell you what it was. Not only will we identify point of view in narrative texts, but we will also analyze the effect it has on the meaning of the story. Think about this as an example. If a conflict occurred between you and your best friend, wouldn't the story be affected by who was telling it? Would it be the same coming from him or her as it would be coming from you? Would the story be different if it was told by some other person who happened to see the final conflict between the two of you, someone who didn't know what you were thinking or feeling, someone who didn't know all of the things that lead up to the final conflict? These are some of the things we will be looking at throughout the course of this next unit.